World Update 12 is currently in development and will focus on New Zealand. The update will provide over 30 points of interest. They're currently saying four bespoke airports, but hinted that there may be more. Currently planned are three landing challenges, three bush trips, and three discovery flights as well. To all of my viewers from New Zealand, I apologize up front for any mispronunciations. After all, I'm just an ignorant, arrogant American. Six cities will be converted to photogrammetry and the majority of this work is being performed by Orbix, not a Sobo. So it should be interesting to see if there's a quality difference in this update as opposed to the previous world updates. The update is currently scheduled to be released on February 7th or February 8th, 2023, so it's not too far away. With six cities being updated, I thought we could have a quick look with a set of before the update flights over the largest cities in New Zealand. The island country is broken into two islands, north and south. The northern island's largest cities are Auckland, Hamilton, and Wellington. On the southern island, we have Christchurch, Queenstown, and Dundin. Let's have a brief look at these starting at the northmost city and working our way down south and wrapping things up at the Chatham Islands. You'll see lots of elevation errors in the landscape, so we hope that Orbix will be addressing those issues as part of the update. An interesting aside is that none of the indigenous birds in New Zealand can fly. They had no natural predators and evolved into non-flying animals. Today, possums populate the island and are a pretty serious pest. The common brush-tailed possum was first introduced in New Zealand from Australia in 1837 to establish a fur trade. This release was unsuccessful and a second release 20 years later at the same Southland location was required for them to establish. While the possums don't eat birds as a general rule, they do eat the eggs and represent a threat to the bird population. In the North Island, we have Auckland. New Zealand's biggest city and its most ethnically diverse, nearly two million people live in Auckland, creating a vibrant multicultural center ringed by beaches, bush, and sparkling harbors. Auckland's bustling city center sits on the edge of the Waitemata Harbor, where the wineries of the Wahiki Island are just a ferry ride away and Rangitoto Island's iconic volcanic cone rises from the waters. The sky tower pierces the city skyline and offers a spectacular 360 degree views. Unfortunately, the current version of the sim lacks this tower entirely. Explore the inner city and its buzzing waterfront for shopping, restaurants, and bars and theater shows. Stroll the golden beaches that line Tamaki Drive just minutes from downtown. Or head northwest to the wineries bush and black sand surf beaches of the west coast. As New Zealand's main international gateway, Auckland also plays host to a wide range of major sporting, musical, and cultural events throughout the year. As you can see in this before flyby, the city has massive amounts of elevation issues, and the city itself is very lacking in accurate detail. Hobbiton, the village of the hobbits in the films Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, are huge tourist attractions in the vicinity of Auckland. Sadly, the detail on this area in the current version of The Sim does not have any of the hobbit homes or details around that area. Let's hope the new world update remedies that issue. The city of Hamilton sits on the banks of the mighty Wakato River, New Zealand's longest river. It's in the heart of the rolling green countryside of the Wakato farming region. The central city is compact and easy to walk for exploring shops and cafes. There's something for everyone in Hamilton with the beautiful Hamilton Gardens to explore local history, Maori art and artifacts to discover at Hamilton Museum, and plenty of family fun at Hamilton Zoo, which is home to New Zealand's largest free flight aviary. Hamilton is also a great base for day trips with the wonders of the Hobbiton movie.
movie set and awe-inspiring glowworm caves and adventure activities of Waitomo, less than one hour away. The black sands and chilled vibes of surf town Ragalan are close by too. The annual balloons over Waikato Festival and National Agricultural Field Days in Hamilton draw huge crowds each year. Wellington is the capital of New Zealand. You'll find some of the most important cultural and historical attractions among the cool urban style of this city on the water's edge. As the home of the government, Wellington is home to the distinctive Beehive and New Zealand's Parliament buildings. Wellington is known as New Zealand's coffee and craft beer capital and is a foodie's delight with a vibrant restaurant, bar, and cocktail scene. It's easy to explore the central city on foot from the stylish fashion and homeware shops around Lambton Quay to the quirky stores and cafes of Cuba Street, Hannah's Laneway, and the surrounding areas. Ride the Wellington Cable Car for fantastic views of the city and harbor. The magical world of Weta Workshop is where you'll see how the special effects for the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit film trilogies were created. For real local wildlife, visit the beautiful eco-sanctuary Zealandia or Kapiti Island Nature Reserve. Okay, on to the South Island. Christchurch is the largest city in the South Island, combines the fresh energy of its revitalized center with the beautiful heritage attractions and scenery that made it famous. Notice the black sand beaches that we're passing over now. The black sand is created by volcanic rock that's pulverized by the sea into black sand. You can also find similar black sand beaches in Hawaii for the same reason. Discover the sights on the inner city cycle paths or jump on the Christchurch tram for a fun way to get around. Join locals at the bustling new boutiques and eateries that have sprung up in the city center. Go punting on the Avon River, which flows through the city, and then explore the green heart of Christchurch and its famed botanic gardens. Christchurch is an international gateway to Antarctica, and the International Antarctic Center is a fascinating window into life on the ice. See the panoramic patchwork of the Canterbury Plains from the comfort of the Christchurch gondola high in the Port Hills. From Christchurch, you can visit the French-style coastal settlement of Akura on the Banks Peninsula, head to the vineyards of the Waipara wine region, soak in the thermal waters of Hamer Spring, or go whale spotting in Kaikoura. Queenstown is a resort town that sits on the shore of Lake Wakatipu among the dramatic alpine ranges. It's rumored that gold prospectors, captivated by the majestic beauty of the surrounding mountains and rivers, gave this now cosmopolitan town its name. There's skiing from winter right through to spring and activities such as bungee jumping, skydiving, canyon swinging, jet boating, horse trekking, and river rafting all year round. It's also a renowned cycling destination, providing everything from easy scenic treks to backcountry trails, road rides to heli biking, and the Southern Hemisphere's only gondola accessed downhill mountain biking. If hardcore adventure isn't your thing, there are plenty of mellow options available. Experience one of the many walking and hiking trails, sightseeing tours, or indulge yourself with spa treatments, boutique shopping, and excellent food and wine. A popular holiday spot at any time of the year, Queenstown is renowned for its four distinctive seasons. Winter brings crisp blue sky days. Spring retains the snow but blooms into longer warmer days. Summer offers sunshine and long twilights. And autumn, a burst of brilliant red and gold. Head out of Queenstown and the drama of the central Otago landscape unfolds around you. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you'll recognize many Middle Earth locations here. Nearby Arrowtown's gold mining history is alive and vibrant. Visit the Lakes District Museum or go gold panning. 
The university city of Dunedin is famed for its rich Scottish heritage and the natural wonders on its doorstep. Dunedin has some of the best preserved Victorian and Edwardian architecture in the Southern Hemisphere. A city walking tour reveals the stories of its historic buildings, such as the iconic Dunedin Railway Station, as well as exciting street art and galleries. Here, we can look at the Dunedin train station as it is today in the sim, since the devs released a screenshot of it post-update. It'll be nice to see the new version in the sim as the current version is just a 2D texture tattooed onto the ground surface with no geometry associated with it. The grandeur of Lanarch Castle offers a glimpse into Victorian life in Dunedin and you can step back in time to the city's beginnings at Toitu Otagu Settlers Museum. When I went to the coordinates of where the castle should be on this hilltop here, I just found these AI-generated buildings that you see here. Let's hope the update addresses this omission. The nearby Otago Peninsula boasts incredible wildlife experiences. It's home to the world's only mainland breeding colony of northern royal albatross, as well as fur seals and New Zealand penguins. That's right, penguins, how cool is that? We'll wrap things up with the Chatham Islands. The Chatham Islands are New Zealand's easternmost outpost, the first place in the world to welcome in the new day and a treasure trove of endemic plants and animals that have evolved in isolation and make these islands one of New Zealand's most biologically important regions. Originally colonized by the Polynesian Moriori people who created a unique lifestyle and society on the these islands while living in isolation from the outside world on the abundant natural resources of the sea and land. Later, European and Moriori arrivals brought their own history and traditions which have melded together to create the culture of the Chatham Islands. The Chatham Islands lie at the eastern extremity of the Chatham Rise and were formed by a combination of two volcanic activity and uplift of the underlying basement rocks to create the low-lying rolling landscape of the main island, while the outlying smaller islands are the remains of individual volcanic events. The fauna and flora of Chathams had strong affinities to the main islands of New Zealand, but through isolation many species have evolved to the local climate becoming unique to the islands. The oceanic climate ensures a wide diversity of species are able to flourish, while the ocean brings its own unique abundance of sea life, including the albatross and the petrels that breed primarily on the offshore islands. I really hope the update addresses this area, as it's a beautiful region that clearly needs to see a nice update from Asobo and Orbix. Okay, that's it for this video. I'm sure we'll be getting more details as we approach the release date. I'll Hope you enjoyed this quick preview of New Zealand in anticipation of the New World Update 12 that will be coming in February. If you liked the video, please click like as that helps other folks find it. And until the next video, take care.